So I wanted to give you a visual of what I'm talking about in terms of what's really happening when you stand up straight compared to what you think is happening when you stand up straight. So this is your spine. Here we would have the head at the top, and here's the cervical curve. And then we have the thoracic curve where the ribs attach. We then have the lumbar curve. This is a rough approximation. And then we would have where the sacrum is at the base of the spine. When we stand up straight, we think we're decreasing this curve here. So we're feeling slumpy. We stand up straight and that's what we think is happening, that we're getting less curve in this area. But what's really happening is we're simply changing the orientation of these curves. So it looks different, but it's really smoke and mirrors. So if this is the lumbar area, when we are feeling slumpy, so here's our slumpy spine, and then we stand up straight by lifting the ribs and the chest and pulling the shoulders back, what's happening is we're doing a bit of a pivot at this portion of the bottom of the thoracic spine, top of the lumbar spine. So we're going from here to here, but we didn't change anything through here. And it's not simply a pivot of the vertebrae, but it's actually what we call a shear action. So the, lumbar, the vertebrae are shearing in relationship to each other. Move, one is moving slightly forward in front of another to accommodate that lifting motion. And it's not good for your spinal cord, it's not good for the discs, it's not good for the ligaments that help to support your vertebrae, and it's not good for the muscles of the low back. If you take a look at the, this is the pelvis, this is the ribs, we want them ideally stacked over each other. Let me hold this more in front of myself. And when we lift the chest up to stand up straight, you can see we're changing the amount of space that's between the back of the ribs and the top of the pelvis. Here we are stacked, here we are lifted. So it looks good because that's what we're taught culturally is good posture, but it's not good for the body. And it also will impact the pressure in the abdominal area. So by lifting the chest, we're changing the pressure that's present in the cavity and we're increasing it because we lift the ribs, we tend to suck in the belly and that pressure, because we decrease the amount of space through here, the pressure that's in there has to go somewhere. Where does it go? It goes up to the diaphragm, it goes down to the pelvic floor nobody needs more pressure on their pelvic floor, or, and, it goes out through the front of the abdomen, which can contribute to diastasis recti, or abnormal separation of the rectus abdominis muscles that run down the front of the abdomen. So, what to do? You wanna make sure that your pelvis is backed up so that it's stacked over your heels, that's step number one. And then step number two, you want to allow the ribs to relax down into the abdomen. So the front of the ribs relax down into the abdomen. These muscles in the back, it's not about muscling the ribs down. It's about allowing these muscles that have been holding the ribs up to relax so that the rib cage can soften down in the front. You're going to feel like you have the worst posture ever. You're going to feel like Quasimodo and you're gonna probably feel really self-conscious about it. You don't have to do it all at once. So you don't have to go from a champion rib thruster to textbook dropped ribs all at once. You can do this incrementally, bit by bit. And remember, every little bit helps. So every little increment that you make helps. Now, feeling like Quasimodo is not the end goal. You can also, in concert with allowing the rib cage to relax, work to mobilize and open up the shoulder girdle and the chest so that you're able to have this open instead of rounded forward as you maintain good alignment through the rib cage and the pelvis. One last thing, 
One prime time to rib thrust, as if there weren't enough opportunities, is when you're holding a baby. So this is a lot of the classic baby holding posture. We've got the pelvis shifted forward. We've got the shoulders back, chest up, and it's all helping to create a bit of a shelf to support the baby on, which makes up for our lack of upper body strength. So back the pelvis up, let the ribs soften down, and use your arms to hold your baby, not your chest and your ribs. And I promise you, your back will thank you, your pelvic floor will thank you, and your abs will thank you. So have fun playing with this, and I will see you next time.